Hey everyone, it's Dominic, also known as TikTok. Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to show you my workflow with the Personas Atom SQ pad controller and my iPad using Beatmaker 3. So the Atom SQ is a 32 pad uh, MIDI controller. It works with Studio One 5 integrated as both a MIDI controller and a step sequencer. And it also works with Ableton Live. But in a standard MIDI mode, you can use this with any DAW as well as iOS music app. So I'm going to show you that today using Beatmaker 3. So as always, if you find this type of video helpful and valuable, please consider liking the video as well as subscribing to the channel. And then also turn on your notifications so that you're alerted to new videos as I upload them. So now let's get into it. So the first thing, I have my 2017 10.5 iPad Pro. Now it's a lightning connector iPad, so I have a lightning to USB hub connected here. And then I have the Atom SQ going USB-C into one of the USB ports of the hub. Now this particular hub also has a power port, so I can plug in the iPad's power adapter right into the port. Now this not only helps power the iPad, but it also helps power the Atom SQ itself. Now newer iPads with the USB-C don't necessarily need a powered hub, so you can connect USB-C from those iPads directly to the Atom SQ USB-C. But in most cases, most people will probably be using a hub anyway to connect other devices. So after I've made the connections, we're going to open up Beatmaker 3. And now the first thing that we want to do is go into the settings. And in the settings, we want to make sure that under MIDI, we see Atom SQ and Atom SQ control for both input devices as well as output devices. We want to make sure that the Amber power button is on for both of those and both of those places as well. The next thing you may want to do is to turn on your MIDI clock out here and then also turn on MIDI sync for the output device of the Atom SQ. Now this is going to allow Beatmaker 3 to send clock information back to the Atom SQ for its built-in arpeggiator. So you can sync those two. So now that we have the connections squared away, let's go and load up a bank and see what happens now. So I have a bank of TRS-808 sounds. Let's load this up. What's happening here is that any pad that I select, then the Atom is going to play that in a chromatic type of way. Now, I don't necessarily want that type of behavior. So now I'll show you two ways that we can rectify this. I'll show you one way, and then I'm going to show you my preferred way. So let's go back to the settings menu, and then under settings and behavior, here where it says route all MIDI to selected pad, Omni, we're gonna turn that off. So now all MIDI is not going to be routed to any one of the banks. We're going to have to manually set that up here in MIDI setup and choose our port. We can say all, and then we can say channel all. And then for multi-channel mode, we want to turn that to single channel. So now, we can have individual sounds on individual pads. The problem with this method is that once we go to a new bank, we have to do the same thing. We have to set the settings for that particular bank uh, so that it receives MIDI from the SQ as well. And we have to turn off because it's still triggering bank A here. So we have to turn those off and say none here. So I don't really like that because that kind of messes with my workflow. I like to go from bank to bank, load up sounds, and just kind of work really fast. So let's turn that off. We're gonna revert these settings. Go back to and turn Omni mode on so that all MIDI is routed to any bank that I select. And then the next thing that we need to do is go to our MIDI focus actions here. So in our MIDI focus actions, what we're going to do is learn the trigger pads and they give you 64 of them. We're gonna learn the trigger pads for the Atom SQ. Now, the way that I recommend to do this is to switch on the Atom SQ to the blocks 
or the continuous mode, not the key mode. So we're going to switch to blocks. And we're going to also make sure that our octave is set at zero before we start mapping these pads. So the next thing we do is hit auto learn. And now trigger pad one is waiting for MIDI input. Now your first trigger pad is going to be here. We tap it, it goes to the next one. We tap the second one, third, fourth, fifth, and so on and so forth. Now the MIDI note numbers start at the bottom and then continue at the top. So we continue here. And then the next bank, which is bank B, since we're on AB, this should be pad 17. So we start here. Okay, so now we have 32 pads. We can switch to the next bank and start with trigger pad 33 here. Now you want to make sure that you press them really good so that you don't skip any of the trigger pads here because that'll just throw off the rest of the notes and you'll have to start over. Okay, so I've gotten 64 pads assigned and you see trigger pad 64 is the last one that was assigned. So we stop MIDI learn. Now let's go back to our banks and we'll switch to bank AB. All right, so that triggers as we, as we switch to Beatmaker 3's bank A it switches and controls appropriately. Now this is the workflow that I want so that whenever I load up new instruments or banks, I don't have to reassign the MIDI for that bank. And then if we switch from pads or continuous to the key mode, this is going to continue to work. So that's how I assign the trigger pads so that I can have a fluid workflow. Now the next thing that we want to assign are some buttons. So on the Atom SQ, we have a bank of A through H buttons here. By default, these buttons will change the octave. And if we hold shift, they now become MIDI CC buttons that we can assign. Now you can change the default behavior of this by going into the setup menu and where it says A through H, bank octave, we simply change that to CC so that now the MIDI CC message button mode is the default. And when we press shift, that will change the octave. So now let's assign these MIDI CC buttons to commands in Beatmaker 3. So what I like to do is assign the bank select to these buttons. So since we have select bank A through H, we can assign nils to the A through H buttons here. So let's start with select bank A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then H. So what this does now is I can go directly to any bank that I want by pressing the letter. Of course, if I had more banks, then I would be able to jump to those as well. The next thing I want to do is assign the previous and next bank options to the up and down arrow keys on the Atom SQ. So we have previous bank, tap it, press the up button, next bank, we tap the down button and then that allows us to cycle through our beat maker banks. Really cool. So Adam SQ also gives you the option of a second page of buttons that you can assign. So we're going to assign these to the modes and beat maker three. So these are going to be the bank modes starting with toggle pad keys. We'll assign that to a then mode select to B 
scene to C, mute to D, solo to E. And that leaves us with three more buttons that we can freely assign. So what that does is now we can change modes. So that's keys mode, select, scene, mute, and solo. The Atom SQ also gives you some assignable buttons on the song menu screen here. So we have six buttons that we can assign. And I like to assign these to the repeat slot. So here we have repeat slot one. We can assign that to button one, two to two, so on and so forth. All right, and then we wanna change the modes here from toggle to momentary. So you'll notice that the repeat slots light up as I press each button. And if I hold one of these while playing a note, then that note repeats according to that repeat slot. You notice that I can press down and hold the pressure and change the velocity in real time as well. So that's the repeat slot buttons. Let's see what else we have here. So now we have eight knobs that we can assign as well. So let's assign those to our macro controls. So we have macro control one. So let's tap that. Macro two. Three, four, five, so on and so forth. Now Beatmaker 3 gives us eight more macro controls that we can assign. And what the Atom SQ has is actually pages for assigning these knobs. So first we want to switch to page two of knob control and tap macro control nine, turn knob one, 10, we turn knob two, 11, we turn knob three, 12, we turn knob four, so on and so forth. So we have two pages of knobs that are now assigned in Beatmaker 3. Okay, so we've essentially mapped our knobs as well as our buttons and our pads. So now all that's left is for the transport. So let's map our transport. So here we have transport play. We tap that, it's waiting. So we hit the play button. Then we have stop. So we hit the stop button. Record, we hit the record button. For transport backward, we're gonna use the left arrow button. For transport forward, we're going to use the right arrow button. And then for loop, we're gonna hold shift on Atom SQ, and hit the play button, which has the secondary function um, labeled as loop. And that gives us another MIDI CC different from the actual play CC that we can engage the loop. So if I hit shift and loop, you'll see in Beatmaker 3 up here, the loop turns on and off. If I hit play, play engages, stop, stops, record, starts recording. So there's just one more thing that we can also map and that's going to be this touch strip here. Now by default, the touch strip is modulation wheel, which I like to use, but we can change that behavior by hitting touch and then turning the wheel to pitch. So this can be our pitch bin. This can also change the range of the keyboard layout. We can also assign this to a specific CC number that we can then map into our software. And then we can also change the resolution of the arpeggiator. Let's switch to CC and we see that it sends out a CC message of nine. We can assign that in Beatmaker 3. I'm going to leave it on modulation, but I just want to show you that you have that option. There's also this option here for our plus and minus buttons. By default, they change the octave of the keyboard, but we can change that to pitch bend, which is what I like. So that's essentially everything that you can map on the Atom SQ inside of Beatmaker 3. This is the way that I like to work, being able to have the buttons that I can directly go to any bank that I want 
having transport controls as well, having the knobs assigned to different parameters in the software, and also just being able to target any bank and being able to play those notes without having to set up any of the MIDI settings there. So the last thing that you need to do, once you've done all of that, is go back into your MIDI focus area, hit the three dots on the right side, and you're gonna to wanna to save this template. So I'm going to save that as Adam SQ. I'm going to overwrite my existing. And now anytime I want to use Beatmaker 3 with the Atom SQ, I simply just load up my template and I'm ready to go. So that's essentially all I wanted to show you guys. Thanks for watching again. If you find this valuable, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Also turn on those notifications. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.